have, you know, they've been out for hundreds of years, but I mean, at the same time, maybe in his mind, because of the dragon gods and the fact that they were still alive, he doesn't really see it as the end of the reign. And I mean, like, humans have been pretty much, for the most part, running the world for a couple hundred years, so I mean, you could say more of it's just a new age of dragons. I mean, I guess from a media standpoint, different take, but right now, the question is, what is his plan? What is he going to do? And what exactly is his actual full-scale plan? We only know the end idea that he wants. And I did a video on what I think is the more straightforward way to go about it, somehow resurrecting the dragons. We saw that there were some skeletons inside of Gilgamesh's Labyrinth in the like lower, more um, hidden areas. But there's another idea that I had come up with. Because we already had... We already had the Eclipse Gate. There's already a way in verse. It, you know, it's not, it can't really be used anymore. You know, the door's broken unless there was somehow another gate or there was another way to go about it. Because, like, say you had another gate and you somehow connect it to the, the door that was in the past, because, like, that one is still going to be there and you just have to, you would have to connect it to a point before it gets destroyed during the Grand Magic Games, regardless of which, if you could do that. We, you can, we don't know. Maybe that's what he was looking for the heart doesn't matter too much for this one i i feel like no because like mishima's already done that plot line i, I would rather it be you know something different like i said resurrecting them or in the idea because i think it fits a lot into the theme of 100 years quest what if he forcefully created them what if he found out a way to use the heart essentially and well not the heart he used the heart to find out the way rather to do it whatever method he needs to to use dragon slaying magic to turn humans into dragons. Because think of it like this. For Ignea, I imagine at least from what we've seen, he's not nearly as kind of like that that dragon stance where they despise humans and they think they're more than, they just think they're like insects and cattle, essentially. He seems to be kind of in the middle. Like he, he seems to kind of like still see them as like people and things, but he, that doesn't really change anything for him because why would he care? I, I think that's a pretty good stance. Like right between someone like atlas flame and alderaan where he's just kind of like still obviously not a good guy but he seems like he just has a different mindset about it but think of it like this as long as he doesn't have that whole mentality i i feel like it would make a lot of sense for him to just say like oh well if there's not a lot of dragons there's a lot of humans i can turn into dragons because he knows about dragon slaying magic he obviously knows about actologia um whether he would do it with fifth gen second gen whatever. I, I feel like first or fifth gen it's kind of like the newest, like, not the newest thing, the most logical thing. Probably first, because, like, how is he going to eat dragons? But maybe it'll be more of just him using the process of turning the dragons. Fifth gen might still be it, because maybe it'll be, like, he takes one of the fifth gen dragon slayers and then somehow connects their power to something, like, forces them to use dragon force, and then uses some ability that, like, spreads that effect out. So people are fast evolving into dragons, like, in, you know, similar to what we saw with Ibarro. I think it'd be really badass. Because one, I think it would set up an amazing progression for the future of the story. I think regardless, bringing back the dragons, I think would make for a really cool setup for future stuff. Doesn't have, like, if, if Mishima wanted to do that next gen thing, I think a world where, like, the dragons have come back, you know, through whatever means and are now, like, a actual thing on the world. I had a video. I don't remember, like, if I post, I'm pretty sure I posted it. Uh, I did a short video. I think it was on the like just going into hundred years quest of some of the things I was hoping for and some of the beliefs I had on like theories of like the villains and whatnot. One idea that I had would be like if they brought back dragons, Mishima could use dragons essentially almost like WMDs, almost like nukes for like countries. Because like imagine like you have two countries, one wants to invade another, but they just find out they have a dragon protecting their country, or there's like believed a dragon somewhere in there. Maybe they, you know, like, they would have to either be like, well, we can't do anything, or they have to either get a dragon slayer or somehow go get a dragon or more of their own. I think that could really f like flesh out a lot of the large-scale wor like world content, because there's still a lot of stuff we haven't seen. Like, there's still continents we haven't touched. And I know like, Fairy Tale's not as much a world-building series. Like, we get world-building on this exploration. It's just not the focus. But I think it would do a lot for just general world lore and it would be an easy excuse to take whatever characters, you know, whoever the main cast would be, whether Mishima would want to do the main casting in or he would want to do the next gen thing. It'd be really easy to get them to go to a location if they had, uh, you know, a dragon or something that they had to deal with. Because I, I feel like if Mishima want, like, want to do that, it would make a lot of sense because it'd be kind of like 
say in like Borto or like Four Nights the Apocalypse, where you it's a sequel and it's with a different main cast, but there's a lot of inverse information you already know that doesn't need to get explained. So Mishima wouldn't have to do nearly as much general explanation. He could have way more of just, you know, showing off some of the world building, showing off some of the locations, uh, maybe, you know, having fun bringing in old characters for cameos. You would have to do way less of that general kind of core layout of, of, of you know, vital information. Like, we don't need to know anything about power, the power systems. We don't know uh, how a lot of stuff has to work because we know generally how a lot of the system works we know how a lot of things work we know about the different types of power systems and whatnot and we know things like oh well if we saw like a character like say we saw jura we wouldn't need to really have like some explanation on him we wouldn't really need to have anything outside of oh it's jura we know who he is we know what he's up to so when we look at this i i feel like it's it's a crazy theory but it's one that i think makes a lot of sense because ignia I like I think it would align up pretty well if he's just like doesn't really care about like turning humans into dragons like thinking they're you know lesser dragons I think he would not really care I think you would look at it as like an opportunity one to bring back the dragons but also to have some fights I think you would really enjoy the battle like I think it would it would also line Ignea like a line up with Ignea really well if like he wanted to bring back the dragons also so he could like live in that world oh, there's someone's honking in the background side because when you think of a character like him you have a character who wants to fight, wants to battle. I imagine in his mind, the old age of dragons, where dragons rule the world, where he can go out and fight and do whatever, is probably the perfect thing for him. Because this is OP dragon, the world being pretty much ran by humans, I imagine would be pretty boring. Whereas, like, if the dragons were all around, he probably could eventually have some good, way more capable battles. Um, I assume he would rather hang out with dragons than, than, than humans. We haven't seen his city yet or anything for like where he's at. I assume he's got form, some form of settlement and worshippers. But as of right now, like he's just kind of free roaming, like living near a volcano. Either way, tell me your thoughts about this, because like the other one I thought, I guess I, I one of the things like I mentioned in the last video, I didn't really need to explain in this one is like uh, some form of crazy method. We wouldn't need anything really that much of like drawn out explanation we know that he had the heart from elopsaria and he pretty much had access to whatever information he wanted even if it was like lost throughout time and, and history so he's good whatever his plan is he's got it unlocked so ignia's ignia's got a lot of stock because i had i had a way more just kind of like footing in the whole stuff with him and natsu but now he's got his own personal plan going up and that he apparently had with doger mag set up I, I think that's really cool. I'm like very interested into where this is going to lead. So anyway, other than that, comment below, thumbs up the video. Tell me your, your thoughts and your theories. Like I like there's a couple ways he can go about it. I feel like the two most logical ways would be somehow either reviving them or turning humans into them because it would, it would make a lot of sense. If there's no dragons, then it doesn't really matter to him because there's tons of potential dragons out there that he could easily turn into. Like I, I think that would make. I think that would make Ignea a really fun villain, too. If he's just like, I want to forcefully turn humans into dragons just to kind of like kick the world into chaos, pretty much. The thing that I would love to see with that, and this is just the last bit. If Mishima did that, I would love to see like if he did like a next gen thing or whatever he was planning to do with it, have things kind of like where character like we would see characters and their emotional responses to being turned into dragons, like characters kind of like what we have got, got with Irene, where it's like, completely completely like life ruining and horrendous for him for, and then we could see characters that love it the characters that would be ecstatic about becoming a dragon they'd be like i'm powerful i got these cool abilities maybe they were a nobody beforehand i think that'd be really really fascinating to see and uh fun to watch unfold but anyway other than that comment below thumbs up the video but from the like button subscribe and check out my other videos from that for shimmy subscribe and thank you all for listening bye